This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and uh, welcome, folks. I can't do much about the committee. There's just uh, nothing we can do. I hope you folks who are watching virtually are doing so from a nice, cool, dry place because right now in person, it's a bit steep. I, uh, I remarked to one of our resident farmers, a member, that my, my crops are only my lawn, but it's unbelievable that here we are in June, and I went out thinking I was going to mow the lawn, and it's this August, September lawn quality in June, so I can't imagine what's done for the folks who produce our crops are uh, going through right now, but uh, we need to pray for rain. I'm loving the nice warm and, and you know, dry weather, but uh, boy, it's, it's really been tough. It's also been a tough week uh, throughout, but the good news is God remains in His glory, and that's the best news of all. Does anyone have anything they would like to share for the good of the congregation? Now would be a good thing to make mention. Otherwise, let's uh, take a moment to prepare ourselves to worship the Lord. I invite you to stand and join with me for the confession and forgiveness as praying in your glory. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way, 
Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often to pass by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but he delights in giving and granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. We enter by praising the Lord the Almighty. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint 
Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Yehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, Abel, as a prophet in your place. And so Elijah set out from there. He found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There were twelve yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the twelve. Elijah passed by him. He threw his mantle over him. At once Elijah left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him. He took the yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he broiled and boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then Elisha set out and followed Elijah. He became his servant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the church in Galatia, the fifth chapter. The apostle declares, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live in the spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But by contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. Those of you are to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Gospel reading. In the Holy Gospel for this third Sunday after Pentecost, according to St. Luke in the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him because he set his face toward Jerusalem. Now when his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. Now as they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, 
but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. But Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand in the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Once again, this is one of the harder gospel readings, but I think in light of many of the things that are going on, uh, not only in our country, but also around the world, calls us to take a very good look at Paul's letter to the Church of Galatia. For freedom, Christ has set us free. You see, the Apostle opens his this portion of the letter to the Galatians with a seemingly simple and yet broad and encompassing statement. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Now, the first thing we need to do is put this into a proper context. Because all too often I think we're we're in a hurry to, to jump into our present day situation, which is well and good. And of course, you know, the, the, the scriptures apply to our present day just as they did a couple thousand years ago and even before that. But you need to realize that the, the church that Paul had started in in Galatia, hence the name of the letter to the Galatians, back then they all lived under a foreign regime. In other words, they weren't Romans, but they lived under the auspices of a foreign rule and law. They had kind of learned to live with it. It was the fact that most didn't like but they lived with it. We moderns sometimes want to leap immediately into our present day, and yet that's not the case here. Religious divisions are what had entered the church that Paul had started earlier in his travels. So he writes to make a distinction between Christian freedom and personal liberty. Controversy was this. Okay, you want to be a part of our church, well and good, but you still must follow the Jewish laws. In other words, you either follow the old ways in the midst of the new, or you're not part of it. And either or situation. Well, the Apostle Paul is, is really realizing that these religious divisions were separating the church and creating such controversies that rather than building up the body, was striving to destroy it. So Paul wants to make that personal, that, that distinction, if you will, between Christian freedom on the one hand from personal liberty on the other. So that's what was going on in Paul's day. That's what was going on in the church in his day. And so when we look at that and we try to apply it to our present day context, yes, it applies very well within the realm that we must realize. We celebrate our freedoms. We'll be moving toward Independence Day day after next Sunday. And yet, 
Paul would rather that we look toward interdependence today. Because that's what's going on here in this letter to the Galatians. He wants that, that distinction to be rooted and grounded in the love of Christ, and thereby become an outward sign of that gift of faith that is within. That's what the church is called to do. Now you move ahead, talking to the medieval times, if you will. We're talking about the time in the late 1400s and into the 1500s, when a controversy again arose in the church. And that's when our boy, Martin Luther, began to examine some things. And so he began to write prolifically to people and places to call them not out of any sort of local entity, but into the fullness of God's love in Christ Jesus. In his treatise on Christian freedom, or the freedom of a Christian, Luther said, and I quote, a Christian is a perfectly free lord of all subject to mind. A Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all, subject to all. And this time and again was something that, uh, that Luther promoted. The freedom that we experience doesn't, doesn't exclude the inner sense or the inner struggle that goes on within us, but it is how it emerges in the outward signs. You see, much like the Galatians, yes, Luther being part of the feudal German, which was the feudal, German feudalism, which was the form of government back in the day, still within the realm of the church, was under the control of auspices, the rules and the regulations of the Church of Rome. And so it became necessary that Luther would speak out that it is not an either or situation. But as Luther would use as an example, time and again, it's both and. A Christian is a perfectly free Lord of all and subject to none. A Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all, subject to all. You see, sometimes we get forced into this either or. You're either one thing or you're the other. No middle ground, no opportunity for those sorts of Christian freedoms that we have been granted by God's grace. So we have to struggle. And Christians are not subject to the law, either in Galatians, or in the Church of Martin Luther's day, or the world of Martin Luther's day, they do not practice it, but they fulfill it. They fulfill it by loving. You see, love is that reality, far from all of the, all of the personal desires that are excluding the heart of true freedom. For freedom, Christ has set us free, says the Apostle Paul. A Christian is a free Lord and a beautiful servant, perfectly subject to all. Now, let me bring it into the present day. It is good for us to have a plan in our daily life. There are many things that good, many good things that we do each and every day. I see it, I notice it. When I have the opportunity or when 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 my brain shifts into the proper gear, I try to thank people 
for what they do for us all around you. And yet by the same time, we also need to keep first things first. Luther would say that we are at the same time saints and sinners, not an either or, but of both and. You and I are part of the body of Christ. We live in a nation that has freedoms. We are not under the, the rule and authority of any foreign entity, whether it's domestic or whether it is from the church. And yet, for us, it seems more and more we are becoming either or. We become a house divided. We ignore the rule of Christ. We forget to keep first things first. My love of country is intact, but my love of the Lord overpowers. I love my wife and children in ways words simply cannot describe. And no matter how much I love them, they have to take a back seat should anything separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. If our politics, if our church rules, if the way in which we treat our neighbors is rooted and grounded in our personal liberties, then we have simply missed the whole point of freedom. It is a freedom that says we do not have to live under the controversies, under the realm of others' rules and laws, but we are given the opportunity to speak the truth in love, to let God be God, to serve one another in love, for the whole law, for the whole law, all rights, is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. This week, as we prepare to celebrate our nation's independence, don't long for the things you do not have but examine the gifts you do have. Reach out and share with others. That's the freedom upon which this nation was built. And while I may have my personal opinions, we are called by the first rule of God in Christ Jesus to love one another. Even as I have loved you, Jesus says, so you are to love one another. May we remove ourselves from an either or situation so that we can be both saints and sinners, lovers, opinions, occasionally judges, judge, yes, judgers and judges, and find our foundation where it's where that we want us, on the cross of Jesus Christ. And let that love fill you as you go forth this day. May God bless you in your endeavors. May God bless you folks at home. And I pray that the Lord will lead us into a freedom when we walk with him. Amen.
With all church we profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the Church, for the creation, and for all who are in need. O oh God, your grace sets us free. Give to your church the freedom to follow you. Guide us by your spirit that we may truly be your people and follow with joy the way of Jesus Christ. God of grace, hear our prayer. You call us to love all that you have made. Teach us to live with wisdom and humility that lands and creatures may not suffer at our hands, but flourish with our nurture. God of grace, yeah. hear our prayer. Your care extends to every nation. Wherever there is hardship, violence, suffering, and despair, especially as the invasion continues in Ukraine and controversies develop within our own nation, Come with your saving power and bring your people hope once again. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your compassion knows no bounds. Wherever there is loneliness or despair, wherever there are cries for healing or forgiveness, show your merciful face. We pray especially for Jay and Roberta, Nancy, Eileen, Bob, Judy, and those who we name in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. And gracious God, we pray for your intervention, especially in this part of the world. Selfishly, and yet confidently, we ask you to bless this land. Bring us the balance between rain and sunshine, heat, humidity, patience, and nurturing. For these things are needed, and we ask you to bless us at this time. God of grace, hear our prayer. You are a shelter and a refuge. Bless those who travel in these summer months. Protect those who seek work and guard all who have nowhere to lay their heads. God of grace, hear our prayer. And you are the joy of all your saints. Like them, keep us faithful unto death, that we might ever follow the way of your Son, and come to share in the joy which has no end. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those that remain in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, thank you for being with us on this rather hot and steamy morning. May you have a good afternoon and a delightful week. Thanks for joining us virtually, and now let us receive the Lord's benediction. May the God of peace, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Thanks. 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 Thanks.